Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me today. It's Alan Barry Labucan with the Rocks and Stocks News Show. Um, I've got uh, an exciting guest uh, in Exploits Discovery is on the show today. They've recently become a sponsor at uh, Rocks and Stocks News. So I love having these uh, companies that are early in their exploration story and, uh, and be able to keep telling the story as it evolves. And I think that Exploits has a very exciting story. And uh, Ken Tiley is on today. He's their VP Exploration. And he's going to help us uh, dig deeper into the story. Ken, thank you very much for joining us today. No, well, thanks, Al, for having me here. I'm, I'm in Vancouver right now. I just uh, uh, spent a couple of days uh, at the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference. And I can tell you that the mood is getting better. People, uh, people seem to be more infused. Hopefully, we've sort of turned that corner. Well, I, I wrote a piece on uh, just uh, yesterday or the day before, and I was talking about how I, uh, you know, it's the it's the season of these conferences where companies get to go out there, show them their geology maps, show them their geophysics, show the drill core, rub elbows with the the big uh, in, um, investors, small investors, and major mining companies, and. Um, I've seen something that I'm quite surprised with, Ken. Over, over my 30 years in the business, I saw a lot of uh, what you would call less than junior friendly deals um, <laughs> when, when majors would come in on a joint venture. But uh, in the last couple of years, I've seen some very junior friendly deals. And that kind of goes to my argument of why, um, you know, I, I'm excited about gold stocks these days is because... I think the big companies are realizing that they've got an opportunity to become the partner of choice uh, and have that reputation out there. And I think that's why we're seeing some of these junior friendly deals. Yeah. In, in the olden days, they would call it uh, getting a grub steak. Yeah. Yeah. And it was a pretty grubby steak sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, uh, that's well, that's good to hear about the conference. I thought it would be kind of bipolar. You've got gold trading at a very good price, record prices in practically every currency, and it looks like it has the potential to do that in the U.S. dollar terms as well. So there's reason for optimism there. But then you've got the the gold stocks trading at you know valuations that are reminiscent to me of prior to the 2001 to 2011 bull market. So uh, was it kind of bipolar there? Um, no, and, and you know, for the first time in a while, I saw quite a few booths that were promoting uh, uranium exploration again, um, uh, you know, up in, in the northern parts of Canada and stuff, which was, um, for me, that it's probably been 10 years since I've seen uh, that sort of activity, you know, when fundraisers going on to, to search for, for uranium again. So, well, you know, it, on, a theme, it, on a thematic uh, way of looking at things, one of the um, exciting new discovery areas, and why is it exciting to me is the uh, potential that I think that this could be a belt. Um, that turns into a long-term mining, uh, another of Canada's great mining camps uh, is out in Newfoundland where Newfound Gold has made their discoveries of orogenic gold systems. And you guys were quick on the draw uh, to get in there in a big way. So you've got a large land package um, and, uh, and, and that's pretty exciting times going on out there. Yeah, you know, Alan, I spent the majority of the, my career since I came out of school in the mid 80s working in uh, northern Ontario in a, a mining area called the Porcupine uh, Gold Belt. Um, you know, there's been over well over 100 million ounces of gold generated since 1910. Everywhere you look around town, you see a head frame. And uh, I see a lot of similarities here. I, I mean, I spent a lot of time working for the big guys, the, the Kinrosses, the Placer Domes. I worked uh, 
on the Hollinger project for, for Gold Corp. I worked for Rob McEwen. I'm seeing a lot of similarities now in central Newfoundland um, to, to what I've been working in for the past 30 years. Uh, we've got a major structure running through the Appleton Fault Zone, which is very similar from what in my opinion to our porcupine dester fault zone uh, and all these very important splay structures peeling off. And we're, we're just, we're so fortunate that our neighbors, Newfound Gold and Lab Gold have had a lot of success over the last few years. And uh, admittedly, they're, they're doing the heavy lifting. They're bringing the attention to the area. They've got, uh, you know, sometimes up to 14 drill rigs testing their zones. They've made some fantastic discoveries over the last six months. And, and they're within two to 300 meters of exploits claim boundaries. We're, we're really, really fortunate that our uh, bullseye property is so ideally situated. So I'm going to give our audience a bit of a uh, geology 101 uh, story mm -hmm. here. When it comes to orogenic gold systems, they have very deep roots. The, the gold fluids are come from very deep. And you need a conduit for the, that fluid to make its way up towards the surface. So you have these deep crustal cracks in the earth that are create a path of least resistance for those fluids to make their way up. The big one in this area is the Appleton Fall. And that's one of these deep cracks in the earth that go down to where they can, where they can be the conduit for um, these uh, orogenic gold cyst fluids to make their way up. And then secondly, when you get close to surface, you'll, you'll often have splays off of those or secondary faulting, so secondary cracks. These don't go down as deep, but they're a secondary uh, conduit for those fluids to make their way up. Now, you also have folding in the rocks and this combination enables you to concentrate those fluids so that you can have deposits and possibly mines. And, uh, and Newfound Gold has been uh, very successful in finding a lot of these. Uh, and uh, did I get the, the Geology 101 right there, Ken? You really did. It's, it, this is really good. I'm quite impressed. Um, <laughs> yeah. And the, the biggest thing that like for the layman is is quartz veins, which traditionally carry nuggets of gold with them, let's say, they can't just blast through solid rock. The rock has to be prepared. And it always sort of kind of blows me away that this preparation process can take millions of years itself. Like in Newfoundland, where we're working, the rocks are typically about 500 million years old. In, in the uh, the Abitibi area where I live uh, in Northern Ontario, the rocks are 2.2, 2.7 billion years old. This is a very long lived process. The rocks, um, you know, as we've all heard of plate tectonics. So as these plates are, are crashing very slowly together and, and grinding up together and thrusting, um, and these faults, like you said, are being created, um, everything locks up and then there might be a period of a hundred thousand years go by and all of a sudden things start opening up and maybe just on the centimeter scale and they open up and all those fluids rush in because as you said they're down deep maybe three four or five kilometers or more at depth they rush into that void that was just created and then everything sort of freezes it locks up and it can lock up for a million years and then and then there's another shift in, in the plates and things open up again. So it's sort of open, close, open, close, open, close. And it can go on over an extended period of time. And um, for anybody that you can kind of learn about this on Google Earth these days. Uh, if you go to the uh, uh, Google Earth and you look at the Atlantic Ocean, you see a big dark uh, uh, center of it called the Marianas Trench. And this is the, the, what separated uh, North and South America from Africa and over there. And it's very distinct. Uh, it's quite incredible what you can learn about geology in, uh, on Google Earth these days, yeah. Ken, just by moving around there. Yeah, the, Alan, the sediments that uh, are in central Newfoundland on the, like on the eastern core, uh, 
the eastern coast of the continent, uh, those rocks started off light off the shore of sort of where Africa is now. And, and just moving conveyor belt, they just started getting shunted northwards and then heading north and north. And then eventually they, after millions of years, they slammed up against the side of the North American continent and they started buckling. And that's what made the Appalachian Mountains. That's, that's everything started buckling and building up and up and up. And now they've been eroded. And it's really cool. The rocks that we see in Newfoundland are the same rocks that you can find up in, in Scotland and, and further yeah. north up into the Scandinavia area. Yeah, and it's interesting. In the early days of new, the, the newfound story, they talked a lot about the Dalradian uh, in Ireland, that those same rocks were once attached to Newfoundland. And yes. you know the reason they were bringing it up was because you had Dalradian and other big deposits, orogenic systems found in Ireland. And they were saying, well, it looks like that over there. So, you know, a few hundred million years later, they're separated, but you've got the same foundational rocks there, if you will. Yeah. And that's why we're so excited at, at exploits, because, you know, with the successes of Newfound and, and Lab, they've covered probably four to five kilometers of the Appleton Fault Zone, of the main sort of break, the main conduit, let's say. And I, I truly believe that if, if we continue to have success at exploits, and we have properties scattered along that same break for over 20 kilometers to the north and, and carrying up towards the coastline, um, if, if we can make some more discoveries along there, then it'll really build a story that this is a regional trend with the opportunity to have numerous gold deposits along, let's say, a, a 60 kilometer trend, not just confined to, you know, uh, four or five or six kilometers uh, that we're seeing so far. Things could well, really, really open up. You guys will also have, because not sometimes you'll have secondary or big cracks as well that are run parallel. Yes. And we saw that in other places where it's not just the one crack that's important. Sometimes you find these other cracks in the earth, these other faults that also have the same environment to create. And you have mines popping up all over the multiple faults. And I, I really think that's the big long-term picture for Newfoundland is that we've got another of these important um, camps developing and we're in the brand early, earliest days of, of that camp. Yeah, well, that was one of the exciting things when I was recruited to, uh, to exploits is it just, I, I figured that the exploration right now uh, in central Newfoundland is probably what it was like in the porcupine mining camp back in the 20s and 30s. Lots of exploration going on, little six, or big successes happening at the Hollinger mine or the McIntyre mine or over in Kirkton Lake. And, and what we're seeing in Newfoundland could be very similar. It could be following the same sort of growth pattern or exploration pattern that, that occurred that led to these fantastic successes in Northern Ontario. Well, I'm glad we did this uh, big picture idea because I think, you know, long after we're gone, there could still be exciting stuff ha happening in Newfoundland, but yep. getting more granular, um, he, uh, there's a video, I guess, let's share that video. And, and what people are gonna learn about is the the, the main big crack in the earth, the secondary cracks, and some discoveries that have been made on your ground and next door to you. And uh, there's a 38 second video that I'm gonna share. Um, let me do the share screen and just make sure everything's working before I make it a full screen. Uh, can you see that, uh, that screen now, um, Jeff? All right. Um, yes, I'm just seeing it now and I'm ready to see you hit play. Okay, first I'm going to go to a full screen. I hope you can see the full screen now. Yes, uh, right now I just see a screen of black, but you have to hit yep. play or start. Okay, yep. here we go. Okay. So okay. there's a perfect... I'm yeah, going to can... halt it and you can talk about it, Jim. Okay, so this is central Newfoundland near the town of Gander. And as 
Alan and I have been talking about, you see that heavy red line heading northwards. That's the Appleton Fault. That is one of these, what we believe is like a, a, a major structure, a major conduit. And you see all those bright red lines? Um, this is from the newfound gold press releases from the maps they've had over the past few years. And you can see their discoveries and the location of their discoveries. And uh, you can see how they're scattered along. There's some of them that are running along the Appleton Fault. And there are splays sort of peeling off um, both to the left and to the right or to the east and the west. And these have been sort of been discovered and uh, sort of publicized over the past 18 months. And they've been having some fantastic success over, up in the northern area. Um, you can see that uh, some of their more recent hits, a place called Jackpot. And just a few weeks ago, they, uh, they had a press release with some really nice looking values in the 20 gram ranges up in uh, Honeypot. And they're even exploring over on the western side of the break. Um, you can see a nice new zone there building up called K2. So our property, our Keystone property uh, is called Bullseye. You can see it there in black. And we were so fortunate to be able to stake these claims during a, a sort of staking rush in the fall of 22. And those heavy black lines are indicating, you'll see a, a, a few pictures of it in a few minutes. Those are those splay structures. The geophysics that we've carried out on our claims suggests that these are like secondary order breaks or as Alan said, cracks in the rock that could possibly be exploited by these later stage fluids that carry the gold. And look at, you can see right where Alan's cursor is, they sort of line up with these new discoveries from Newfound with jackpot and honeypot. And so a few weeks ago, we brought a drill rig in and we're testing. Can, just... can I interrupt you? I often see, sometimes I get accused of interrupting too often, but it's always because I, I see something that pops into my mind. And right here at Honeypot, that little circle is where this discovery is. And as you can see, there's two interpreted secondary faults here that coalesce into one. And then that continues down here. So that you were talking about rock preparation and that's a pretty ideal situation for secondary rock preparation. Yes, for sure. And and even you see the other ones to the south, like they don't stop right at the claim boundary. It's just oh, that like sort of, lot of yeah, that's that's the limit of the limit of our information. And who knows, they could very well continue on to the newfound property. Well, especially they look like they strike in the exact same direction. And you're not just, you're not just drawing black lines on the No, you'll, you, see, you'll see the geophysics. Too. No, you'll see the geophysics. As you advance this video, you'll see the geophysics come in and, and I'll be able to speak to it then. Okay, let me pop forward here. So we're just zooming in. Now you see that that kind of muddy gray area in our claims, Alan? Those, yeah. that is a, uh, a survey that we flew in 23, and that's LIDAR. And it works very similar to radar. It's called light diffraction and ranging. And, and it's flown with a helicopter, um, much like a radar survey. And it sees down, it has the capability, it's bombarding basically the Earth's surface with millions of, let's call it blasts or beams of light uh, that reflect off all the... Uh, the, the surface, they cut through all the leaves and the branches and the swamps, and essentially it maps out the features of the, let's say the hidden or the, uh, the disguised um, surfaces. So you can see that- so This would represent the rocks that are underneath the cover of vegetation and everything else. That's right, we call it a bare earth model. Everything's been sort of laid, laid clean. And you can see that. Look at how there's a sort of northwards trending uh, fracture in there. And that now is occupied nowadays by a, a, a creek, a little creek that runs through that area. So it's like that's an indication of a, just like a valley, a valley in the bedrock. Right. So that also is an indicator of a, a structural weakness. And, and then as for the for the non geologist out there, I've said this before to people that. What you see at the surface 
is off in the rocks is often a representation of what is below that because you're seeing the extension of what's happening in the rocks below. That's right. It's a, a surface expression. Right. So, uh, okay, so we see some good cracks in, uh, yeah. in the bedrock. Let me, uh, let me go forward here a little bit. There, ah. now there's our geophysics right there. <laughs> so, so that is what we call a magnetic survey uh, back in, in the winter time, actually over Christmas of 22. Uh, we had our contractors come in and run some magnetic surveys and VLF, very low frequency surveys, over top of those newly acquired claims. And it essentially maps out disruptions in the underlying bedrock. It sees down through the 10 or 50 feet of sands and gravel, and it maps out um, differences in basically the, the magnetic or the iron content, let's say, of the underlying rock. So this is the reason that we've come up and one of the main tools that we use to come up with those heavy black lines with those splays. You can see those lower cold colors like blues and, and, and aquas and, and they indicate potentially breaks or areas of the rock that have been sort of um, fractured and prepared and they could be possible sites of later stage fluids. And there where, you, where your cursor is, uh, Alan, that again, that see how that kind of coincides with that LIDAR information that we showed where the creek was just a few minutes ago. And then so all a, of the- It's a combination of geophysics and seeing what the bedrock yeah. looks like to yeah. come up with these, uh, these models of the, frac the cracks in the earth. Exactly. And look how they link up to where our neighbors have had success. Okay. So okay, so this... these these circles, folks, are actually drill hole in intersections. Uh, and the when you get into the reds and the purples, that's the high grade, highest grade stuff. So as you can see here, what Ken is talking about, look at right along that interpreted faulting, secondary faulting you've got some very nice hits. Yes. Now these are these are hits as indicated as publicized in, in the numerous press releases by our neighbors and by Newfound Gold. And uh, things seem to line up really well. Yeah, okay. So let's, uh, let's hit the play again. We're just zooming in. So you can get a better idea of, now you yeah. can see these colors a little bit better. They don't all just merge into one color. You've got an, a series of really nice hits over here, like probably eight or 10 intersections in here and here, all lining up right on that interpreted fault. Yeah. And that is what Newfound calls the, the, the jackpot discovery or the jackpot zone. This one here. Correct. And is this Honeypot? This is their brand new discovery called Honeypot that they had a press release a few weeks ago. You really, your readers should have a look at their website. There, there's some really nice looking new values in there. Cool. Okay. Let's uh, play some more. And now we're just rotating. Okay. Around. So now this is a cross section. And now you can see the distribution of the gold, the high grades and various different grades from a cross section. So it's like cutting a cake down the middle and you look into the side of it and there you can see the distribution is, uh, you get a better idea of the distribution of the gold. Yes. Now, again, this is just, our, this is our interpretation of the results that, that new founders have made public. Okay. We're, we're, uh, the red part is your interpretation, but these are actually exactly. all locations. Correct. From right. from their press releases. Okay. Perfect. And we're not we we've just applied our own sort of interpretation um to their success story. Is and this the claim just trying, boundary? That would be the claim boundary heading northwards. Wow. And so look we're looking right in this particular now we're spinning it around. 
And we're just showing that those red bars, those red, what we call solid surfaces, um, are just, we've sort of set them up trying to show that the possible extension, the possible splay as it heads off into our claims, eastwards onto our claims. So interesting here, you see the intersections start really close to surface and then they continue down here and that's suggesting that it continues to the uh, east. Yeah. Now it's still it's still very early days. Absolutely. As you said, they're they're just yeah, right now they're just suggestions. This is not this is not a, a definite solid uh you know indication, but right now from from all the uh the insights, let's say, and and uh the intercepts that they've been getting and that they've been publicizing, it, it sure indicates to us that there is the opportunity. And that's probably the best word of calling the opportunity that these structures can continue heading. Everything's open in, in all directions. Well, and you can sort of draw your own conclusions based on what folks can see as far as the intersections go. And, and uh, these are just the, these represent where they've got bowl kits in the drill core. Now the, the holes will be, you know, over here and continuous, but this represents what they've hit. 200 meters. So far. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. And they're there, as far as I know, they're still active in the area. Okay. So, all right. So there we go. That's yeah. the end of the, the video. I'm just going to uh, get rid of the share screen and uh, get you back on there, Ken. Ken. All yeah. right. So as as you can see from that little video clip, um, there's lots of opportunity for exploits to drill, I guess, on our side, on the eastern side of the claim boundary. And two weeks ago, we mobilized to drill in there with a company called Trust Drilling Incorporated. And uh, they're, they're drilling a limited program right now. We're, we're, we're not going in there and blowing our budget. We have about Two million dollars of flow through that we've devoted to exploration over the next year or so, and um, so we're making our first pass of drilling, probably about in the order of twenty five hundred meters, um, to test this concept to find out do those splays indeed continue to head eastward. Right now, <clears throat> things really look well with with our geophysics and our lidar, and then coupled with the the great results that that Newfound have been getting. So um, it's just for us, it's a, just a natural next step in, in building the story and to try and lock in or confirm the location of these splay structures. And once we found them, once I was going to say, once we've found them, Alan, and we've sort of, we can see them in drill core, then we need to, I guess, refine our search to find out where the gold mineralization is occurring, where the, let's call it the flow pattern or the fluid flow is, is moving along these fractures. If it is moving eastwards at all, it, it'll be, a, it, it's just a, a we're really, we're, we're, we're glorified detectives. And you're doing that, that uh, first pass, if you will, to sort of test a concept. I heard Rick Rule once, uh, several times say that, you know, <clears throat> that's what you're doing with the, uh, with the truth machine or the drill rig is to try to um, answer unanswered questions. So right. it's natural from a geological perspective to say, well, look, look where they're hitting and it's right beside the claim boundary. And, you know, the, 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 the geology doesn't care about claim boundaries. And, you know, there's indication that something should be on your side of the fence. So now you're trying to answer that question. Yes, exactly. Um, and that's why our our focus right now is on our on our bullseye claim group because we feel that's where we have the best opportunity to uh, you know to uh, to make advancements. And it's quite interesting that um, Gold uh, Newfound Gold seems very excited about their. Everest, Honeypot, and Jackpot discoveries in the north end of their claims right beside you guys. 
Yes. I mean, they're still doing fantastic work down at their main their main discovery areas, the uh, Keats and Iceberg, and and uh, they're progressing there as well. And they're really a pretty impressive uh, company in that, you know, they're they, in the early days they recognized the potential that 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 structural corridor, if you will, could be a place to make good discoveries, orogenic gold. Then they did that. And they're drilling away in the hundreds of thousands of meters. So they're they're learning as they go. And they're doing an interesting uh, deep penetrating seismic survey that will, um, I think, really unlock the depth potential. Because so far, their drilling has been in the first, let's say, few hundred meters of surface. And um, to put that into context, at, Gold, at Red Lake, they were mining in that sort of first few hundred meters, kind of moderately success drip mining. And the same thing can be said for Fosterville in Australia. And then they got deeper and they hit the Bonanza zone at about 1000 meters uh, with fabulously high grade. And it just kept on going and going. And that was the, the game changer for um, uh, uh, Gold Corp. Uh, and so, you know, trying to understand what's deeper, this seismic survey that they're doing is quite exciting. Yes, it, it's 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 going to really. Uh, we're hoping all of us, everybody in the area, is hoping. As I said earlier, it's really going to open up that entire, um, let's say, level of opportunity for the Appleton Fault Zone and all the related splays. Right. Uh, they completed the survey back in the summertime, and I'm sure they have their uh, their algorithms and their, uh, you know, their interpretive uh, artificial intelligence running through that data 24 seven. Right? It's it's a huge data load and um, everyone is excited and uh, hopefully it uh, it it turns out to be a very good tool it can really open up the entire camp. And it has the potential to be an important tool because it's used in the um, in the oil business to see those deep deposits of oil. So, uh, kind of taking something from the oil business to to look for buried treasures of gold. Yeah, and we'll have to see how how successful the tool is. It, it, this is still uh, kind of. I guess you could say cutting edge to to run uh, this type of survey in such deformed. Um, what we call dead or hard rock or dead rock, but uh, in Eastern Canada, but uh, um, we'll hopefully uh, get, or they'll hopefully get some uh, good results. Well, I'm really excited about it because I have some experience in this. Uh, I, I spent a lot of my career in diamond exploration and we found a, a, a sill or a dike, a Kimberlite dike, and um, we ran seismic over it and, and it mapped it quite nicely. Now, the difference was that, you know, we were looking at the first 50 meters uh, from surface. So your resolution could be quite impressive there. And who knows when you get down four or 5,000 meters, uh, what it's good resolution is gonna be like. But uh, it was it was pretty impressive to see this Kimberlite pipe just being, or Kimberlite sill or dike being quite, perfectly matched based on what we subsequently did with the drilling. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a uh, let's say a new and developing uh, opportunity. And that's the nature of those newfound gold people is that uh, they are, they're, they're the, one of the key guys is one kind of a leader in this AI and, and using new methods to look at uh, those old rocks. Yeah, yes, very much so. And and they've had success doing that for sure. Okay, so right now you're drilling, and um, and so we'll we'll continue to uh, watch for any reports out of that drilling. And uh, uh, I guess that's where we are right now, Ken. Not not yeah. to uh, go too far into the future. Yeah.
And uh, yeah, this has been great. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, like usual, when you and I start talking, five minutes very quickly becomes 35 minutes. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, yeah. Well, you know, that's because I, I spent, uh, I, I were, used to work for a big geological consulting firm. And every, every lunch hour, we'd all get together at the boardroom table and talk about rocks and stocks. And uh, that's the name why I called the show what I did. And, and that's exactly when guys start talking rocks, that's what happens, Ken. And, and right. uh, you're really good at sort of bringing that, that big picture concept and geology stuff so that my audience can understand it. So I, I appreciate your time and I appreciate your, your ability to uh, bring this into layman's terms for my audience. Oh, I appreciate it. And then just your audience could, like I said, go back to the websites for, for companies like uh, in this, in the central area, like obviously like Exploits Discovery, our neighbors, Newfound Gold, and they'll get a lot more details and a lot more, uh, um, let's say, factual science than the, the, the chit chat that you and I have been doing. Yeah. And, you know, I'm a big proponent of that, Ken. I think of, uh, investors in this space should do their homework and try to be like you and I were, we're, we're looking for that data to try to understand what's going on. And there's plenty of data out a newfound gold to your so immediate south. And then to your immediate north, Labrador is there. And then your website, of course, uh, and your corporate presentation, you just had a, a new one get together for your Vancouver Resource Investment Conference. And I was scrolling through it before our chat today, and there's a lot of great information in there for, for people to learn about exploits as well. Yeah, thank you. That's that's a, a great uh, a great sort of summary. Perfect, Ken. Well, all the best of luck to you with that truth machine, Ken. This has got to be exciting times for you when you get to poke some holes in the ground and look for buried treasures. Yes, it is for sure. It's it's uh, it's why so many of us become go to school and become geologists. We we love the I guess you'd say the thrill of the hunt. Yeah, and you're hunting right now. It's hunting season. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to wrap it up, Ken, and we can have a chat at the other end. All right, thank you. So there you go, folks. Um, I uh, I'm a treasure hunter at heart. I I love this stuff of looking for buried treasures. Um, but you know, you gotta you gotta look at all the information to try to figure out if there's a chance that you could have a buried treasure somewhere. And, um, you know, there's been lots of drilling work uh, immediately uh, to the south and, uh, and to the west of, uh, of uh, Exploits Ground uh, by Newfound Gold and to the north as well. And, and there's plenty of information out there about the, uh, the emerging uh, camp uh, outside of Gander in close proximity to Gander, uh, Newfoundland. And it's a very exciting uh, emerging camp, uh, as Ken was mentioning, based on his experience in some of these important belts in Canada. You've had mining going on for 100 years, and, and along that 100 year or more history, mines have been found and found and found and found. And um, so I think that that's where things are uh, certainly have the potential of going uh, in the uh, in the emerging Appleton camp outside of uh, Gander and and there's other structures there because in in some of these camps you can have more than one of these deep cracks and I mentioned earlier that exploits was uh, uh, quick on the draw. Uh, when this camp started to come to life. And they have important uh, ground on, on the key structures and some of these other deep structures as well. So uh, very well positioned and, uh, and they're maybe their best position, uh, well, at least today is, the, uh, is their uh, um, uh, horseshoe and uh, 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 bullseye project. Uh, and uh, they're drilling it now, so it's a good time to do that homework. 
And that's what I'm happy to do is to help you do your homework. And that's the nature of these shows. And uh, um, so on that note, do that homework. Speak to your financial advisors. Give the company a call. They like to tell their story. Uh, and, uh, and that's how you can uh, become an informed investor. On that note, have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.